Hey YouTube, before we get started, the overlords of this platform recently played with the algorithm yet again, and I, as well as your favorite Catholic content creators on this platform, have noticed that their audience engagement has been negatively impacted. I've received numerous emails from people saying that they no longer get notifications about videos being uploaded to this and other Catholic channels. I've seen secular commentators saying the same thing in the past two weeks. So to fix that, click the notification bell on the right below the screen to get a notification about when I upload, and do the same for your favorite Catholic content creators. We all appreciate it. Now on to the story of the day. Archbishop Chaput recently turned in his resignation to Pope Francis upon hitting his required age of retirement. Canon law says that's 75, which is relatively new in the life of the Church, going back only a few decades. Traditionally, the pontiff is free to accept or ignore the resignation as they see fit, which is why some cardinals continue to serve well into their 80s. This wasn't the case with Archbishop Chaput, whose resignation was accepted immediately. His successor was already named in what might be the fastest replacement in history, marking a final snub to Archbishop Chaput, whose main crime might have been that he was too conservative for Francis and company. Let's go over who his replacement is, and who Archbishop Chaput is, and what his crimes were. And boy, are they heinous. Chaput was known mostly for his being staunchly anti-medical Moloch worship, and he stood against making that issue equivalent to other issues of social concern for the Church. He rejected the seamless garment nonsense and organized his faithful against the abominable practice every year. I'll quote the LifeSide article on this, replacing only the names of places to fit the censorious sensibilities that we all deal with here. Quote, Last year, he condemned a pro moloch Pennsylvania state representative for videotaping himself harassing several pro-sanity women and teenagers outside a Temple of Moloch facility. Chaput called for broad participation of a prayerful rally held outside the facility asking those in attendance to meet the hateful actions of, of the lawmaker with the love of Christ. In 2018, as the referendum to eliminate the pro-sanity amendment to the Irish Constitution loomed, Chapu urged his diocese to pray for the troubled nation. In 2015, he wrote a column in which he stated that there is no moral equivalent to Moloch worship, and that such worship is a uniquely wicked act. And mostly, quote, Chapu also stood against Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church and his agenda to push the San Francisco lifestyle in the church. In 2017, Chapu denounced Pastor Jimmy Martin by citing St. Paul's letter to the Romans and said that, quote, if the letter to the Romans is true, then persons in unchaste relationships need conversion, not merely affirmation. If the letter to the Romans is false, then Christian teaching is not only wrong, but a wicked lie. Dealing with this, frankly, is the only way an honest discussion can be had. End quote. As you know, like Eugenio Scalfari, Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church is, frankly, an enemy of the Church, who runs around trying to normalize immorality, often with ecclesial approval. Chapu did his job by denouncing Martin and reminding the faithful of the universal call to chastity and holiness and purity, and that isn't unique to anyone who suffers from the San Francisco temptation. He also issued strong, clear guidelines that stated that no ordained person of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia can in any way be present at or preside over any James Martin fake marriages despite their being legal in the eyes of the state. Archbishop Chapu is a member of the Prairie Band of Potawatomi Indians, and as such, he was the first Native American to be named an archbishop in the United States. He tendered his resignation, as I said before, in compliance with canon law. His 75th birthday was this past September. His service to the church as Archbishop of Philadelphia, he has held that office since September 8th of 2011, and has been, by most reports, been pretty distinguished in his service. He is not the kind of bishop well-liked by the maniacs in Rome at, in this day and age. He defended the church's traditional teaching on marriage and divorce, when in the aftermath of that monstrosity known as Amoris Laetitia, he issued guidelines upholding the traditional norms prohibiting divorced and civilly remarried couples from receiving Holy Communion unless they, quote, refrained from sexual intimacy, unquote. If the divorced and civilly remarried received communion, Chaput said publicly, it would confuse the nature of the Eucharist and the sacraments in general. 
but he probably made an enemy of himself to Francis when he said of the now long-forgotten Dubia that he wanted Francis to answer the famous letter by the four cardinals. He probably should have said that if he only cared about receiving a promotion, which it is clear that he didn't seem all that concerned with. And I say that because there has been an elephant in the room with Archbishop Chapu since the arrival of Francis in Rome. Chapu was denied the cardinal's hat despite being the Archbishop of Philadelphia, which has traditionally been a cardinality at sea. It might have something to do with Chapu's perceived politics, though. In the August 2018 letter to the public by Archbishop Vigano, here is what Vigano said that Francis thought of Chapu. Quote, I began the conversation asking the Pope what he intended to say to me with the words he had addressed to me when I greeted him the previous Friday. And the Pope, in a very different, friendly, almost affectionate tone, said to me, Yes, the bishops in the United States must not be ideologized. They must not be right-wing like the Archbishop of Philadelphia. Although Francis did not give the name of the Archbishop. They must be shepherds, and they must not be left-wing, he end quote. That is, if you'll recall, in reference to Vigano's multiple attempts to bring the, uh, the clerical crisis to the attention of Francis, who seemed to Vigano to be more worried about the scourge of so-called right-wing priests and bishops in the U.S. than he was about the members of the James Martin and McCarrick Brigade harming defenseless young people. In other words, Chapu sounded like what you would hope you'd get from a bishop of the church these days, a defender of the issues in the public square in this increasingly satanic culture, instead of someone who wanted to play kissy face with the world. But his replacement? Well, that's a different story. The LifeSide article does a good job with the biography, which shows that the bad bishops aren't all created by Francis. Quote, Chapu's successor is Bishop Nelson Jesus Perez, age 58. He has served as ordinary of Cleveland, Ohio, since September 5, 2017. Perez was raised to the Episcopate in 2012 by Benedict XVI, who appointed him the Auxiliary Bishop of Rockville Center, a diocese in New York State. Prior to his Episcopal ordination, Perez was chosen by St. John Paul II in 1998 as one of his chaplains and granted the title of Monsignor. He was named a Prelate of Honor by Benedict XVI in 2009. The Archbishop-elect of Philadelphia has a BA degree in psychology from Montclair State University, and both a Master of Divinity degree and a Master of Theology degree from St. Charles Borromeo Seminary in Philadelphia. Fluent in English and Spanish, Perez will be the first Hispanic Archbishop of the Pennsylvania Diocese. His parents took refuge in the USA from Cuba. End quote. So there you have it. Keep all that in mind as we look at the soon, new soon-to-be Ar Cardinal Archbishop of Philadelphia in the coming weeks. Perez takes the usual stances you expect from the modernist wing of the Church, with his advocacy of open borders, though I will say in all honesty that it does look like he will continue to at least take the same positions on medical Moloch worship as his predecessor. And that's a good thing, as that battle is ramping up in the culture. But what has caused a stir more than anything else about Perez is his stance on the liturgy. As the ordinary in Cleveland, he issued guidelines for the Mass saying that the faithful should stand from the communion hymn until, as he puts it, distribution of communion uh, is finished. Sort of like distributing pamphlets or coupons, I guess. Yeesh. I can't imagine thinking of communion and such. I've seen reports that he called for the faithful to stand during the entire liturgy of the Eucharist in the new Mass. Though I was not able to confirm that. If you are in the Diocese of Cleveland, let us know in the comments if that has been the case in your experience. This ruling by Perez has been in full keeping with the general instruction of the Roman Missal, where in paragraph 43 it permits the bishop to decide how the faithful behave before the incarnate Lord truly present in the Eucharist, and whether they are to behave as if they recognize who they are in the presence of or not. The rule states, quote, The faithful kneel after the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God, unless a diocesan bishop determines otherwise, end quote. Though I don't know why you wouldn't kneel, at least briefly, after receiving our Lord in the Eucharist, but I'm not a bishop, so what do I know? Needless to say, the call to stand during the communion rite is bizarre, but then again, I've personally avoided the Novus Ordo liturgy to the best of my ability for a long time now, and this is one of the reasons. But again, what do I know? He's a bishop, and I guess he can issue that kind of ruling, which is in keeping with the general instruction of the Roman Missal. Though, quite frankly, people ignore that set of rules all the time. For example, it's a violation of the same set of rules of the general instruction of the Roman Missal for the laity to mimic the actions of the priest during the Mass, including holding your hands in the orange position and acting like you're, you're taking part in the consecration, as well as raising hands during the Our Father, among other commonly seen things at the new Mass. 
I guess enforcing the rules to limit reverence is the important thing for a lot of modernist bishops, and the elimination of kneeling during the Eucharistic rite is, is quite frankly, alarming. You should expect to see that in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia soon after his triumphant arrival in that city in the coming days and weeks. But what do you think about this? Are people making too big a deal out of his eliminating kneeling during the liturgy? I know that Archbishop Chapu rubs some people in our circles the wrong way with his secular political opinions. Do they actually matter here? Is Perez going to be as bad as some people expect? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for, your, for listening and for your support of this channel. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.